So we are right now in the home of our host, Kumar. Um, it's our first time ever doing couch surfing and we just thought we'll tell you a little bit about how the experience has been. Essentially, couch surfing allows you to meet with somebody local, like someone who's from this city or someone who's been living in this city. And basically what it gives you is an opportunity to interact with somebody who's from here, somebody who's been here long enough to show you more of the city, more of the country and more of the culture than you can imagine you'd get from just, you know, doing it on your own or in a tour. So we reached out to Kumar a few weeks ago and he um, invited us to come stay with him for the night that we were spending in Abu Dhabi. And right now uh, it's around 5, 6 p.m. in the evening and it's still so hot and sunny that you can yeah, still see. Yeah, it's 35 degrees still. Uh, but Kumar's here in the garden, so come on, let's say hello, hello. and meet him. Hi, Kumar. Hi. <laughs> so, Kumar has been here for how many years, Kumar? So, it's been seven years here. Seven years. Yeah. And Kumar's crazy about travel. Crazy is an understatement. <laughs> the real world is 60 countries. No, uh, uh, I can say that it's uh, the, that's the only thing you can uh, learn uh, from yourself and uh, what you are. Mm -hmm. So, and then best way to learn the people. True. And and we got like a unique experience of visiting UAE because otherwise we would have stayed in a hotel. We wouldn't have really, you know, seen how you navigate it as, you know, an Indian who's lived here for a long time, what it's like. And especially with, you know, figuring out all these cheap travel tips and tricks <laughs> that you'll only learn from locals, right? Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, that's what the cause of thing, it's really helps that yeah. way. So you can uh, learn from the people yeah. who lives it locally. Uh -huh. They know that what exactly happening around the country, what are the important places to see. So yeah. when you see in the internet or the media, mm. it's also different. Yeah. When you learn from the person, it's a different. So uh, that really helps actually yeah. if you're going by uh, course of it. And tell us th the strangest thing we've seen so far is that in, in such a hot country, you seem to have a very green garden. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, actually it's uh, my passion. So okay. farming is my passion. Oh. So earlier, uh, if it's a non-summer, other uh, six months, I used to grow here a uh, lot of vegetables, and oh. these flowers will go outside. Very good guests. <laughs> <laughs> Any feedback you want to give for us uh, to remember? This is the first time, so we don't know about the do's and don'ts. Uh, okay. yeah. If you have stepped into your privacy or you know, made yeah. you uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, no. Uh, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, okay. It's fine. Now that you have seen how uh, good of a guest to be there, if you want to invite us to your house, you can please invite us. <laughs> So in couch surfing, the other thing is like you don't have to pay for your stay when you're when you're staying with one of these hosts who invites you, but you are still expected to bring some value. Yeah, yeah. You, people host you because they want to hear your stories, your experiences, your travel stories. Or maybe even like if you're good at something, like let's say you can cook cook up some really nice Indian food, and that's your skill, for example, uh, then maybe you can offer that. So using their kitchen, maybe their ingredients, or maybe you can buy from the supermarket, or even just take them out to lunch. Uh, you can you can do something special. And some people host you because they want to practice English with you. So you can just speak with them and have them improve their language. True. So that was a little bit of a couch surfing story to share with you. And uh, although it might not always work that we find a place to stay like this, uh, we are hoping to experience more of these uh, instances in the future. So. Yeah. Okay, so a quick update on the UAE five-year multiple entry tourist visa. Yes, that is a very long name. So I've just made notes so I can say it in a very crispy manner. I'm going to read from that. First thing that we want to talk about is why did we get this visa? Uh, mainly for two reasons. So we basically wanted easier access to travel the world and UAE is sort of the center of the world in that regard. The second reason was uh, that from UAE you get a lot of uh, cheaper flight tickets due to the low cost airlines that fly from here. Uh, one example is Wizz Air, another one is Fly Dubai and so on. Um, that's why we chose to get this particular visa. So basically the visa fee can be broken down into two components. One is the actual visa fee itself, which is like for the visa being processed. The second component is the security deposit you place for five full years with the authorities. 
this uh, security deposit is refundable whereas the visa fee is not refundable if approved uh, the visa fee does get refunded to some extent in case of rejections uh, they basically collect only the admin part of this uh, admin component of this visa fee uh, the deposit on the other hand stays with the authorities for five years and at the end of it if you have not violated any terms you actually get the entire amount back so the processing time for this visa is typically around three to five working days in our case we submitted the visa uh, application and for about two weeks nothing really happened uh, because it was the week it was a fortnight leading up to ramadan during this time i had also complained one or two times on the customer happiness section uh, insisting like like to asking about the application status so as soon as ramadan got over the very next working day our application was like picked up for processing and within 10 minutes or less it got approved so it was pretty fast one of the conditions that comes with this visa is that you enter within 60 days of the visa being approved. So if you don't come into UAE within those 60 days from the date of issuance of the visa, your visa stands completely null and void. And the only money you will get back, even if the visa was properly approved, uh, is just the security deposit. So you'll end up losing like 15-16k just because you didn't come and use that visa and activate it. Now the documents required for this visa were pretty straightforward. The first one they wanted was the round trip flight tickets. To book the flights, we went with Emirates. Uh, you can book, if you're sure of your dates, you can book whatever dates, whatever round trip you want. In our case, we weren't sure what days we actually wanted to fly. And for the purpose of the visa, we decided to book a refundable option. So within Emirates' website, you can actually choose different categories. One of them is like a fully refundable option, which is called GoFlex Plus. So we opted for that. Uh, that also says that there are no charges or uh, cancellation fees of any kind to process a refund if we choose to back out at any time. I think up to 48 hours before the flight. So we went ahead and booked that as a round trip from Bangalore to Dubai. And one important point to note is if you if you if you use an Indian card, for example, the Emirates website will also charge you in INR. Uh, that's a good thing because you get the entire value back. In case you're using a different currency card to the currency which is being billed on the internet, like on that uh, Emirates website, then you have a chance that you will lose some money in foreign currency conversion. But that's not because of Emirates. It is mostly because of your card and your nationality, wherever you're from. In our case, it wasn't a problem because the billing was in INR and we did use an Indian card itself. The second document that we needed to submit was the insurance details. Uh, so we needed travel health insurance to for UAE and it wasn't accepting any insurance from outside, in, outside of UAE. So basically you need to get an insurance from a UAE based insurer and uh, this typically like they have specifically for this visa for tourism and multiple other options so we we chose whatever was for the lowest time period but it was also corresponding to our flight uh, itinerary whatever dates we were flying so we got it for the 15 to 30 day bracket so this insurance is valid for 30 full days and it was the cheapest that we could find i think it was orient insurance i'll put the details down here um, we also had to submit photos the photos have specific requirements which uh, is similar to Schengen you could say Schengen requirements so if you go to any photo studio and just say give me a photo uh, like give me a passport photo for Schengen requirements then they will definitely help you with that a uh, very crucial element of this application was the contact details so in our case we didn't really know anyone who was staying here uh, in uh, UAE whether in Abu Dhabi or Dubai uh, we ended up uh, booking a hotel and then using the contact details of that for the address as well as the phone numbers it's important to note that the phone numbers have to be uh, like for a landline for an office line as well as for a mobile number and you can't interchangeably use like a landline number in case of the mobile and vice versa it actually blocks you from being able to submit the application so we contacted the hotel and got uh, the the relevant mobile number usually uh, most of these hotels have like a whatsapp number which should be a mobile number so you can use that so the last and most important document required for this visa is the bank statement uh, so the visa requires that you have a minimum of four thousand us dollars in your bank over the course of six months it doesn't mean that you build this money over 
like six months it means that for every one of the six months you need to have at least four thousand us dollars every month every month uh, so in our case like because we are you know we are from india the local currency is indian rupees uh, our bank statements are in indian rupees and that is also accepted you can submit in your local currency as well uh, we had to place we had to uh, evidence that we had at least 3.2 to 3.3 lakh rupees per month in the bank uh, so we ended up getting like the online bank statement and we submitted that in the first instance um, immediately the the application i think got reviewed instantly by maybe a person or a bot we're not too sure but uh, we got a comment that said the bank statement needs to be re-uploaded because it does not meet the uh, required criteria uh, when we went back and uh, I, I went back to customer happiness and chatted with them and learned that the uh, bank statement needs to be an original that is sealed and stamped by the bank and it has to be a color document that needs to be scanned and submitted so I went back to the bank uh, quickly asked them to help me with a six month uh, bank statement and also do a seal and uh, sign on it with the stamping and then that document I uploaded the colored scan of that and that was validly accepted. Um, most people face issues in this, uh, which is why they don't end up submitting the right kind of bank statement. Even after multiple uh, reminders by the authorities, uh, they don't submit something that is relevant and that is why the visa application gets rejected. It's important to know that when you file a visa application here for five years, you get three chances. So three times they do like a preliminary rejection uh, saying return for modification. And you have to respond to this by submitting the more appropriate or correct document um, in relation to whatever comments they have put in place. So we got that the one time uh, because we submitted online statements and then I corrected that by submitting the original bank statements scan itself. Uh, once these documents are submitted, you're good to go. You just have to wait for them to process it. If they have any other comments, they usually indicate. Sometimes people have been asked for the hotel booking as well. We didn't have to submit that in our case. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Hopefully this video was informative and will be useful to you in the course of you applying for your own visa. If this video answered all your questions and you found Navneet's uh, points very useful, please buy me a coffee. The link is down below. I might share it with Navneet. Okay. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next vlog. Come with us and you know join us as we explore this beautiful world one country at a time uh, it you know it's it's incredible because one it's you know we are indian uh, passport holders definitely the world is a very challenging place to visit using our passports but just like everybody else on this planet regardless of skin color or nationalities uh, we have the same dream of wanting to explore the world so with your support and your encouragement we'd love to show you more of these places on this channel so please subscribe and stay tuned to watch more. Bye.